uh, some people that got stranded on an island. And I think it was six or seven were Asians, and there was one American. And as soon as they were on, got stranded on the island, they had to divvy up the jobs. And one Asian was given the job of fishing. The other one was uh, hunting. One of them got a job of gathering firewood, you know. Uh, so they all had jobs, and the American was assigned the job of eating. And so at the end of the day, they would all gather around and prepare this feast, and the American would sit there and eat it. And he wouldn't eat it all. He'd leave just enough crumbs so he can give it to the six Asians so they can go on and repeat it again tomorrow, spend all day preparing a meal for the American to eat. And now the way modern economists would look at it, they would say, well, this American is vital to the whole island economy. Without him, nobody would have to fish, nobody would have to hunt, nobody would have to gather firewood. I mean, he's creating all this employment on the island. But the reality is, every, every Asian on an island, his lot in life would be dramatically improved if they kicked the American off the island. Because now they'd have a lot more to eat. Or maybe they wouldn't have to spend all day hunting and fishing and they can, you know, they can lie on the beach a little bit. Why do you think that a recession is coming and just how bad is it going to be? I think it's going to be pretty bad. And whether it starts in 07 or 08, I think, is immaterial. And I also think it's going to last not just for quarters, but for years. And what's going to happen in 2007 is a lot of these artificially low arm payments are going to be reset upward. You're going to start to see uh, both the government and the lenders reimposing lending standards and tightening up on credit. And you're going to see a lot of the speculative buyers turn into sellers. And these sky-high real estate prices are going to come crashing back down to earth. And what's going to happen now is we're going to see the subprime type law scenario unfolding in other asset classes such as bonds backed by auto loans, credit card debt, and that's really going to you know, pull the rug out from under the consumer. But you've got these cronies in Washington, they're like little kids with a chemistry set, and they keep on throwing these chemicals together, trying one thing after another. They hope they're going to stumble on a miracle, but they're going to blow us all up. Where are the real conservatives? There was one, you know, Ron Paul, but they drummed him out of the Republican uh, Party. Uh, he's talked about all this, he's warned about all this, but everybody has ignored him and others like him. I mean, I get marginalized in the, the mainstream financial world, just like Ron Paul has been marginalized in the political world. Ron Paul really has no business being on stage as a legitimate representative of Republicans. So, Congressman Paul, and I'd like you to take 30 seconds to answer this, you're basically saying that we should take our marching orders from Al-Qaeda. Are you suggesting the United States of America caused the attack on 9-11? That Ron Paul is a no one who wanted to make a name for himself. Another question about electability. Do you have any, sir? There's always the question as to whether or not you... <laughs> when we make a mistake, it is the obligation of the people through their representatives to correct the mistake, not to continue the mistake. And that's what we do on the floor of the No, we are dug a hole for ourselves and we dug a hole for our party. We're losing elections and we're going down next year if we don't change it. We're going down next year if we don't change it. Give this man his due. Back then, in the height of that bubble, in the height of that party, he did. Ron Paul knew and said then that something was wrong with our financial system a long time ago. Madam Speaker, I rise in strong opposition to this bill because it won't solve our problem. It is said that we're in a liquidity crisis and a credit crunch and all we need is more credit. The Federal Reserve has already injected over a trillion dollars worth of credit and it hasn't seemed to help a whole lot. Uh, injecting another six or seven hundred billion dollars will not solve the problem. Ron Paul is probably the only politician who is out there now saying Stop all of this spending. All of this spending. David, we, we have a, uh, a deficit now of $53 trillion. That means that every American has an implicit mortgage of over $175,000 each. Each household has an additional pl uh, uh, implicit mortgage of over $400,000 each. But unlike a typical 
mortgage, there's no house to back this. This is the reality of the crisis in the US economy. People who used to own their own homes are living hand to mouth on land once occupied by those less fortunate. In the last month, some 60,000 houses were repossessed. Their occupants forced out when they could no longer meet ever-increasing mortgage payments. Foreign governments are buying strategically critical American assets and at an alarming rate. Foreign governments, including Communist China, have launched 20 new investment funds since 2000, holding an estimated two and a half trillion dollars. Long term, this is disastrous because everything we're doing here, everything we've done for six months, we've already pumped in $700 billion. Here's another $700 billion. This is going to destroy the dollar. The Constitution was written very precisely to restrain the power and force of government and to protect the liberties of each and every one of us. This has nothing to do with free market capitalism. This has to do with a managed economy, an inflationary system, corporatism, a special interest system. For the past several years, everybody thought we had a real economy. We didn't. We had a bubble. All we did is borrow trillions of dollars from the rest of the world, and we blew all the money on consumption. We can't pay the bills. The asset bubbles that were inflated by reckless monetary policy are deflating around us. We're looking at a symptom. We're looking at the collapsing uh, of, a, of a market that was unstable. It was in, unstable because of the way it came about. It came about because of a monopoly control of money and credit by the Federal Reserve System, and that is a natural consequence of what happens when a Federal Reserve System creates too much credit. This wasn't created by the free market. All this excess leverage is there because of the government. It's there because of the Fed. They did this. They infected us with this disease. The fact that all these companies are now How dying... How did they make Wells Fargo make stupid home equity loans? They, what they did is they provided Wells I Fargo... Mean, well, all these companies with free money and they let them go out and, and leverage it up and it's like I use the analogy if you go if your kindergarten school teacher leaves the classroom and passes out pixie sticks and po soda pop and then leaves the classroom and she comes back and the, and the kindergartners have wrecked the place who do you blame where do you draw the line with our money it is not your money in fact it if anybody is, if anybody it is taxpayers it, money we'll, we'll get it passed uh, I came back and suspended my campaign. Mr. President, I've received 91,000 phone calls and emails from California. 85,000 of them opposed to this measure. I think if we really do care about the livelihood of our constituents, Time. there's only one vote and it is yes. But in the end of the day, there's no real separation between Wall Street and Main Street. There's only the road we're traveling on as Americans. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting this important legislation. And it comes down to one word, jobs. Jobs, so we can create jobs in our country. People have to know that this isn't about a bailout of, of Wall Street. We look forward to working closely with Congress to resolve this financial crisis. So I propose that the federal government reduce the risk posed by these troubled assets and supply urgently needed money so banks and other financial institutions can avoid collapse and resume lending. And here we go. Investors unloaded stocks in a frenzy on Monday. It came on the heels of another interest rate cut in the U.S. The more than a half million Americans lost their jobs in November. Congressman, this is getting out of control. What we're doing today is going to make things much worse.